Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and God bless you. Welcome to the Good Book Project. Today is Palm Sunday, April the 2nd, 2023, the beginning of the Holy Week in the world of Christianity. Today being Palm Sunday is the day where Jesus triumphantly rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, fulfilling Old Testament prophecy that we'll get to later. When he triumphantly entered, they knew the king had come and yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the one that comes in the name of the Lord. And they used palms. Now, this is what happens if you know, you know. And these are the palms that were used in order to praise Jesus as he was coming in. They would say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And I got these because I went to my Palm Sunday service earlier at my church. And if you haven't, please take time out of your day and make it out for the beginning of the Holy Week. Welcome to the Good Book Project. We are doing our chronological Bible in a Year video podcast. And in that podcast, we have reached now day 92. Yesterday for day 91, we were reading in the book of Judges the story of the beginning of Gideon the judge in Judges 6. We read here now how Gideon was now raised up and charged by the Lord to free the children of Israel after Midian subdues the children of Israel. Gideon is the one to be called by the Lord and the angel of the Lord comes down and speaks to Gideon and charging him to be the one to be now judge over Israel. Gideon asks for a sign that it is the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord performs this sign so he could see. And then he is told to knock down all of the false pagan gods that Gideon and his family, not Gideon himself, but his family, were worshiping. Then, in Manasseh, then... We have more signs done because Gideon wanted to be for certain that it was the Lord calling him to be judge for Israel. After God performs more of these signs, now he is fit to lead in which he takes 300 men down from all the way to 20,000 because the Lord didn't want that many men to go because Israel would say that they won the war themselves. By only taking 300 men, they go around the camp of the Midianites, and they have trumpets, and they have torches, and they shout with a great shout, and they have pots that they break, and confusion comes throughout the people, and they start killing each other, and they run away, thus liberating Israel from Midian in that camp, and then we have the two princes of Midian killed and their heads delivered to Gideon for a victory for the Lord. We're continuing on with that story today for Palm Sunday, April the 2nd, 2023, day 92 in Judges 8. I will pray us into the word and we will get right into it. Father God, we come before you today thanking you for giving us this Palm Sunday. Thank you for letting us come all the way to the beginning of the Holy Week. That Lord Jesus came down to be with us, and to save us, Father God. Today I pray for today's word that you bless it, and by extension you bless us, and you give us wisdom and understanding so we can go through your word and hear what you have to say to us on this Palm Sunday. In the name of Jesus I pray, amen. For day 92 in our Chronological Bible in a Year video podcast, we're continuing on with the Judges story with Gideon in the book of Judges, beginning with chapter 8. And we're going to do this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads. Judges 8. The men of Ephraim said to him, Why have you treated us this way, that you didn't call us when you went to fight with Midian? They rebuked him sharply. He said to them, What have I now done in comparison with you? Isn't the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abizer? God has delivered into your hand to the princes of Midian, Oreb and Zeb. What was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger was abated towards him when he had said that. Gideon came to the Jordan and passed over. He and the three hundred men who were with him, faint yet pursuing. He said to the men of Succoth, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmanah, the kings of Midian. The princes of Succoth said, 
Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmana now in your hand, that we should give bread to your army? Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord has delivered Zeba and Zalmana into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. He went up there to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way, and the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth had answered. He spoke also to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmana were in Karkor, and their armies with them, about fifteen thousand men, all who were left of the army of the of all the army of the children of the east. For there fell one hundred and twenty thousand men who drew sword. Gideon went up by the way of those who lived in tents on the east of Noba and of Jogbeha, and struck the army, for the army felt secure. Zeba and Zalmanah fled, and he pursued them. He took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmanah, and confused all the army. Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle, from the ascent of Heres. He caught a young man of the men of Succoth, and inquired of him. And he described for him the princes of Succoth and its elders, seventy-seven men. He came to the men of Succoth and said, See Zeba and Zalmanah, concerning whom you taunted me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmanah now in your hand, that we should give bread to your men who are weary? He took the elders of the city, and thorns of the wilderness and briers, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. He broke down the tower of Penuel, and killed the men of the city. Then he said to Zeba and Zalmana, What kind of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? They answered, They were like you. They all resembled the children of a king. He said, They were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you have saved them alive, I would not kill you. He said to Jether his firstborn, Get up and kill them. But the youth didn't draw his sword, for he was afraid, because he was yet a youth. Then Zeba and Zalmanah said, You rise and fall on us, for as a man, for as the man is, so is his strength. Gideon arose and killed Zeba, Zeba and Zalmanah, and took the crescents that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, both you, your son, and your son's son also, for you have saved us out of the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Gideon said to them, I do have a request, that you would each give me the earrings of his plunder. For they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. They answered, We will willingly give them. They spread a garment, and every man threw the earrings of his plunder into it. The weight of the golden earrings that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold, in addition to the crescents and the pendants and the purple clothing that was on the kings of Midian, and in addition to the chains that were about their camels' necks. Gideon made an ephod out of it and put it on Ophrah, his city. Then all Israel played the prostitute with it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his house. So Midian was subdued before the children of Israel, and they lifted up their heads no more. The land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Jerubbaal, the son of Joash, went and lived in his own house. Gideon had seventy sons conceived from his body, for he had many wives. His concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, a son, and he named him Abimelech. Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Joash, his father, in Ophrah of the Abizrites. As soon as Gideon was dead, the children of Israel turned again and played the prostitute following the Baals and made Baal-bareth their god. 
the children of Israel didn't remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hand of all their enemies on every side. Neither did they show kindness to the house of Jerubal, Baal, Jerubal, that is, Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had shown to Israel. Judges 9 Abimelech, the son of Jerubal, went to Shechem, to his mother's brothers, and spoke with them, and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Please speak in the ears of all the men of Shechem. Is it better for you that all the sons of Jerubal, who are seventy persons, rule over you, or that one rule over you? Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. His mother's brothers spoke of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem, all these words. Their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. They gave him seventy pieces of silver out of the house of baal Bareth, with which Abimelech hired vain and reckless fellows who followed him. He went to his father's house at Ophra and killed his brothers, the sons of Jerubel. Jerubel being seventy persons on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubel, was left, for he hid himself. All the men of Shechem assembled themselves together with all the houses of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the oak of, that, of the pillar that was in Shechem. When they told it to Jotham, he went and stood on the top of Mount Gerizim, and lifted up his voice, cried out and said to them, Listen to me, you men of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees set out to anoint a king over themselves. They said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Should I stop producing my oil, with which they honor God and man by me, and go to wave back and forth over the trees? The trees said to the fig tree, Come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I leave my sweetness and my good fruit and go to wave back and forth over the trees? The trees said to the vine, Come and reign over us. The vine said to them, Should I leave my new wine, which cheers God and man, and go to wave back and forth over the trees? Then all the trees said to the bramble, Come and reign over us. The bramble said to the trees, if in truth you anoint me king over you, then come and take refuge in my shade. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you have dealt truly and righteously, and that you have made Abimelech king, and if you have dealt with Jerubal in his house, dealt well with Jerubal in his house, and have done to him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you, risked his life and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And you have risen up against my father's house today and have slain his sons, seventy persons on one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his female servant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. If then you have dealt truly and righteously with Jerubal and with his house today, then rejoice in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer and lived there for fear of Abimelech his brother. Abimelech was prince over Israel three years. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the violence done to the seventy sons of Jerubal might come, and that their blood might be lain on Abimelech, their brother, who is who killed them, and on the men of Shechem who strengthened his hands to kill his brothers. The men of Shechem set an ambush for him on the tops of the mountains, and they robbed all who came along that way by them, and Abimelech was told about it. Gael, the son of Ebed, came with his brothers and went over to Shechem. 
and the men of Shechem put their trust in him. They went out into the field, harvested their vineyards, trod the grapes, celebrated, and went into the house of their god, and ate and drank, and cursed Abimelech. Gael the son of Ebed said, Who is Abimelech, and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Isn't he the son of Jerubbaal? Isn't Zebul his officer? Serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shemek, but why should we serve him? I wish that this people were under my hand. Then I would remove Abimelech. He said to Abimelech, Increase your army and come out. When Abimelech, when Zo Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, his anger burnt. He sent messengers to Abimelech, Abimelech craftily, saying, Behold, Gael, the son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to Shechem, and behold, they incite the city against you. Now therefore go up by night, you and the people who are with you, and lie in wait in the field. It shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, you shall rise early and rush on the city. Behold, when he and the people who are with him come out against you, then may you do to them as you find, as you shall find occasion. Abimelech rose up, and all the people who were with him by night, and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. Gael the son of Ebed went out and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city. Abimelech rose up, and the people who were with him, from the ambush. When Gael saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. Zebul said to him, You see the shadows of the mountains as if they were men. Gael spoke again and said, Behold, people are coming down by the middle of the land, and one company comes by the way of the oak of Mionanim. Then Zebul said to him, Now where is your mouth, that you said, Who is Abimelech, that we should serve him? Isn't this the people that you have despised? Please go out now and fight with them. Gael went out before the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many fell wounded, even to the entrance of the gate. Abimelech lived at Aramah, and Zebul drove out Gael and his brothers, that they should not dwell in Shechem. On the next day, the people went out into the field, and they told Abimelech. He, told, he took the people and divided them into three companies, and laid wait in the field. And he looked, and behold, the people came out of the city. So he rose up against them and struck them. Abimelech and the companies that were with him rushed forward and stood in the entrance of the gate of the city, and the two companies rushed on all who were in the field and struck them. Abimelech fought against the city all that day, and he took the city and killed the people in it. He beat down the city and sowed it with salt. When all the men of the tower of Shechem heard of it, they entered into the stronghold of the house of Elberith. Abimelech was told that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. Abimelech went up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people who were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand, and cut down a bow from the trees, and took it up, laid it on his shoulder. Then he said to the people who were with him, What you have seen me do, make haste, and do as I have done. All the people likewise each cut down his bow, followed Abimelech, and put them at the base of the stronghold, and set the stronghold on fire over them, so that all the people of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. Then Abimelech went to Thebes, and encamped at Thebes, and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city, and all the men and women of the city fled there, and shut themselves in and went up to the roof of the tower. Abimelech came to the tower and fought against it, and came near to the door of the tower to burn it with fire. A certain woman cast an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and broke his skull. Then he called hastily to the young man 
his armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, that men not say of me, a woman killed him. His young men thrust him through, and he died. When the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they each departed to his place. Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he did to his father in killing his seventy brothers. And God repaid all the wickedness of the men of Shechem on their heads, and the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbaal, came on them. Thank you, God, for your holy word. Action-packed, action-packed that we read today. We read in the beginning of the passage, we see Gideon now with the heads of the two princes of Midian, now going after the kings of Midian. And in pursuit of them, he runs into two other people in pursuit and asks them for supplies and for resources because the men are tired. And both of them dealt with him saying, are they... Are the kings of Midian now in your possession that we should give you anything? And Gideon said, he repeated to them in harsh words that once they come back to them, then I will deal with you. He then follows the two kings of Midian, eventually overcomes them and takes some of the resources of them and then comes back and fights one of the people in the city that dealt harshly with him in a mocking way when he said he was going after the kings of Midian. Then Gideon builds an ephod, which ends up being a thing that the children of Israel play the prostitute with in worshiping it. But then at the end, Israel is now liberated once again, and they live the right way as long as Gideon was alive. But then the Bible once again says, as soon as Gideon died, Israel then began to play the prostitute and started worshiping Baal, Bareth, as their god once again. We end with Gideon having 70 sons and also has a concubine of the people of Shechem to which births a son to him, Abimelech. This leads us into the story of Abimelech and Shechem now, with Abimelech going to the people of Shechem and saying, Hey, listen, um, wouldn't it be better if just one of us rules over you of the sons of Jerubbaal? who is Gideon, and not just all of the 70, and because I am of you, because his mother was from Shechem, they rallied behind him, and he had a conspiracy against the rest of his brothers, and he killed all of them minus one, Jotham, the son of Gideon. So now he is placed king over them, and in Shechem, and then Jotham, who speaks over to the children of Shechem now, he puts a curse on them saying that as, as long as God is alive, God will avenge us for the bad fruit that is inside of your house, that being Abimelech. So then eventually God makes Abimelech and the people of Shechem who were once in cahoots together to take over, now placed against each other in now getting revenge on each other, and now they're fighting with each other, and towers are going on fire, and Abimelech is running away, and he's going to burn someone, and then a woman throws a rock off of a, off of the tower that he was about to burn, and then it crushes his skull, and so he calls his, ar his armor bearer over and says, kill me quick, so that no one can say that I was killed by a woman. So at the end, he, the armor bearer stabs Abimelech, who was the son of Gideon by the concubine of Shechem. And then God then fulfills the promise that he would now do this, do the sin that Abimelech did and killed him and also dealt with the people of Shechem for also being in cahoots with Abimelech and dealing with his children, the children of Israel so harshly. So in the end, both Abimelech and the people of Shechem got what they deserved and got what they put out in their own sin. Day 92 is complete, and I'm so happy you made it out today. Now, today is Palm Sunday. Please, if you haven't made it out to church today, please do so, so that you can receive a word from God as we now enter the Holy Week. I will pray us out of the word for today, and we will go throughout our day. Father God, we just come before you today thanking you for letting us go through your word. 
even just one more day. Thank you for bringing us to another Sunday at the end of the week. Father God, in your goodness and your mercy, you still allow us to go through your word, and you still give us life and the ability to read your word, Father God. I pray for the rest of today that we live inside of your protective hand and under your perfect will, filled with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Day 93 is tomorrow, and I sincerely hope you return for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. <laughs>